letter. You always, best practices, you wanna list the account in question. So I pull my credit report, I have this late payment based off of, you know, it has this account number, et cetera. You wanna state the law they violated. So whatever your go-to law is based off of the FCRA 1681B number two or whatever. Uh, and then have a call to action. You want to instruct them to respond back to you within 30 days or 14 days, or whatever you give them, with uh, deletion pursuant to 15 USC 1681 IA1A. So that just talks about the procedures. You can also talk about compliance procedures. Uh, you can talk about 1681E. You know, just you want to just basically give them the basis of how things are going to go. Typically, you would send a debt validation letter first. Let's say if you're disputing for a collection and just make them under answer under the penalty of perjury, different questions that they can't answer. So keep that in mind as far as your dispute letters when you're creating them, that's what you wanna keep in mind. So powerful affidavit elements. So I like affidavit. And the reason why I like affidavit is because affidavit is where you're gonna win as far as your court. You're basically telling them to testify under the penalty of perjury that what they are saying is correct. They have to prove that you owe that debt, right? So in the affidavit, I want you to state who you are, state who they are. An example of stating who you are is saying that you're the alleged debtor. You're the alleged person that owes the debt and then they're the alleged creditor. So you want you want to state what you want them to, to do. So you want them to answer under the penalty of perjury that um, you know this account is yours. There's different questions. I'll send y'all an affidavit template. You want to state the law that they violated, FCRA laws. You want to inform them. Let them know you're going to sue them if they don't rebut the affidavit line by line. So that's a, a violation of Rule 301 of the Federal Rules of Evidence. We're going to get into that when we talk about litigation. You want them to answer under the penalty of perjury. So whether it's a company, whether it's the attorney that you're communicating with, you want them to answer under the penalty of perjury because you as a consumer, you always have the power. You can answer under the penalty of perjury under to the best of your ability. But these corporations, they violate Rule 601. These attorneys, they violate Rule 602. We'll talk more about that later and how to actually use it. You may know about know about these rules just from watching my content or whatever, or just being in a consultation, but it goes deeper than just saying Rule 602, Rule 601. It's how you actually use it. So we'll talk about that in week three. You want to number your facts as facts you know that they cannot answer. I'll give you all a template so you don't really have to know too much, but yeah, just keep that in mind. You want to give them a timeline to respond. You got 14 to 30 days. I'm going to file uh, for a Rule 55 default judgment against you. I'm going to get the item deleted. I'm going to get, you know, my credit reporting how I wanted to report. That basically is what your uh, remedy is going to be. You want to notarize it. So I notarize without the United States, which means that you just need two witnesses. But you could do the traditional notary if you want. And the template I'm going to send y'all is basically notarizing without the United States. So when I say notarize without the United States, that lets you know that there's more than one United States. United States Corporation, 28 USC 3002, you go down to number 15. There's also the United States, which is talking about us as consumers based off of the Constitution, you know, our rights and things like that. And like I said, I'm going to email y'all the affidavit I use, but I'm not going to email y'all that right now. I'm going to email it uh, after we go through the litigation.